Hello, how are you? It's a very uh, grey, gloomy day here in London because uh, this is England. We're getting into the autumnal months and there's going to be a lot more of this, of just cloudy days and greyness. And uh, so I've had to do a slightly different setup today because usually I set up my camera so I just have natural light, but I tried to do that and you could barely see me. It was so dark and so uh, I just have overhead light now and I've had to set up in this position. Um, I feel like I should emerge from behind this curtain and say like, hello, it's me. I'm here to talk about what I read in September. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I am here to talk about what I read in September. Uh, I'd really like to know from you too, like what you've read over the course of the last month. Um, what are some of the best things you've read? I always really enjoy hearing about that in the comments below. Um, so if you want to comment and let me know rather than just listening to me prattle on about what I've read, um, that would be really nice. But uh, so I read a number of short books and then one very long book, um, which is a nice balance, I think, to yeah, sort of have um, different kinds of reading experiences. So uh, first off, I read uh, this novel, The Appointment by Katharina Volkmer. And uh, this is a novel by a, um, well, a German author who now lives in the UK. And the novel is about a woman who is going to see a doctor um, who, um, a kind of therapist um, who she's talking to. And the entire novel is basically one long monologue of her talking about her experiences and her feelings about her German heritage and her very mixed feelings about that. Um, her various relationships she's had. She has uh, has had an affair with um, a married man and, um, and how she has a very spiky relationship with a workmate of hers um, that have uh, caused a lot of trouble for her at work. And uh, so it's it's just this sort of her talking about her experiences in a very blunt, overt way as, as, as if she were going to see a psychiatrist. And at first I thought the doctor she was seeing was a psychiatrist, but I'm not really sure he is because she drops in all these little hints that there are other things going on. Like at one point she refers to how the doctor is taking photographs of her and um, you're sort of wondering like why is that happening so there's this tension going through the novel where you sort of wondering what's really going on in this relationship um, between these two people and it seems to be at a you know proper medical office because she refers to there being a secretary outside and yeah, and these other things but um but yeah she's basically talking about her feelings in such an upfront way that um that you know people would find it really abrasive if someone that even you knew very well came up and started talking to you in a way and um, about a very like taboo things like in regards to sex and um, her psychology and so this is a novel that I, I wouldn't recommend to everybody because I know this probably wouldn't be everyone's sort of thing and um, and yeah some people might find it too abrasive and also you know there's not really much plot other than her talking about her life it's all just one long monologue but I thought it was really interesting and uh, um, yeah, give give me, uh, made me really think, you know, about sort of like heritage and where we came from and what makes um, our identities. And um, it's really interesting the way she talks about gender in this, how when she was young, she just sort of assumed that she could become a boy if she wanted to. She like hilariously refers to how she um, thought she could just go to a shop and purchase a penis and then she would, you know, be a boy. And um, and so, yeah, I, I sort of enjoyed, um, there, there are some like funny bits in it too but you know kind of not um sort of like slapstick sort of sense of humor but just these like a very like odd sort of perspective way um kind of humor and uh yeah i i really enjoyed it and um thought it was it was really interesting if that sounds like your kind of thing then uh, you might want to give it a try i also read come again by robert webb uh so robert webb is uh, mainly known as an actor um he acted in the show peep show um if uh, you've ever seen that great british series um it's absolutely hilarious if you want a really funny punchy series to to watch i um, really recommend that um it has olivia coleman in it um who's uh, brilliant of course and has you know become oscar-winning actress but this is something she did before you know all of that and uh, and so but yeah robert webb is um and actually um 
Olivia Coleman also narrates the audiobook of this, so you know they're obviously very chummy and have continued to be chummy. Um, but anyway, Robert Webb um, wrote a memoir before, um, and this is his first novel, and uh, and it's it's really enjoyable. Um, so it's about a woman who works for a tech company. Um, she's experiencing grief because her husband died quite suddenly, and um, the the tech company she works for basically tries to erase people's internet history that they find uncomfortable and don't want to be there anymore. So there's like that aspect of it and that business gets a bit shady and um, and she discovers a shocking thing that they're sort of involved in and then she um, threatens to sort of blow the cover on this and then it becomes, there's a kind of like thriller aspect to the story in, in that regards. But it's also kind of a romance in a... Um, in this kind of like magical way, she just um, she wakes up one morning and she's back to um, her college days again and uh, being at university and meeting her husband for the very first time. And so it's like traveling back um, to that first time and then and having all these experiences again and sort of yeah re-experiencing her relationship for the first time. And I thought it was really interesting how I mean he's quite like playful and you know that's just kind of like a fun. Um, sort of storyline, but um, but it, it does give an interesting perspective on relationships and, you know, thinking how, like, would we have the same experiences we would if we knew what our, about our partner or people close to us now, um, if we went back and met them for the first time, like, would we still have that same connection with them or, you know, would it be slightly different? And so I think it raises a lot of interesting questions like that. And then it is quite fun, the kind of more thriller aspect of the story where there's this big chase scene through London where these basically kind of mob bosses are chasing her to try to stop her from blowing the cover on this particular story. And, um, and that was kind of fun, but I felt like it sort of these two different aspects of the novel kind of jostled against each other a bit. It was maybe trying to do too much all at once and should have maybe been more focused on one particular thing. But it's a very enjoyable novel. Like I, I um, it's there's uh, there's a lot of funny moments and there's a lot of drama. And like I said, there's, um, you know, a lot of thoughtfulness to it as well. But um, but uh, but yeah, on on. I, it's not it didn't kind of blow me away as the best novel I've ever read but um but yeah if you want a really enjoyable read um I'd really recommend this I also read Don DeLillo's new uh, novel The Silence uh, and this is a proof copy obviously so I'll put a picture up of um of the finished copy and uh, Don DeLillo is a writer that I've uh, I, I've enjoyed reading his novels a lot when I was at university but I've not read him for a very long time and uh, and I think it's interesting how over the past 20 years he's produced relatively slender novels um you know compared to his novel uh, underworld which is giant it's a really big uh novel so uh so yeah i was i was curious and excited to to read him again and i had a very interesting experience um reading this novel because i actually read the entire novel aloud um to my partner while uh we were driving across europe and uh and so like i um talked about recently i went on a short holiday break um to uh, italy and we drove all the way there from england we went through the euro tunnel and then drove through france and Germany and Switzerland down to Italy and uh, and it was a strange experience because we weren't we couldn't stop in France or Switzerland because their numbers are quite high and um, and so because of the pandemic going on um, we we couldn't stop there um, because it would have meant once we get back to England we'd have had to um, self quarantine for two weeks and we didn't want to do that so uh, so yeah so we just drove straight through those countries and you're sort of allowed to do that if you don't stop or interact with anyone and uh, and I'm just sort of bring that up because you know this novel is basically a dystopian novel um, where in um, the uh, it's set in the year 2022 so it's very close to our current times and uh, and basically a couple are on a flight when um, suddenly all technology stops and breaks down and the the plane crashes and um they the the couple survive and uh because they're they're going to meet they're flying from europe to america going to meet their friends to watch the super bowl and um and so it cuts between this couple who are on the plane and then a couple who are 
watching the Super Bowl and awaiting their guests to come. Um, and they also have a friend there with them who is a former student of the, the wife of that couple. And uh, and so it's, yeah, about the um, the journey that this couple take to go meet their friends to watch the Super Bowl in this kind of American tradition way, um, but how society is basically broken down because all technology is just sort of stopped and gone dark, and and it's um, it's basically like it almost reads like a play because there's these speeches from all of the characters who sort of don't know how to deal with everything breaking down like this and stopping, and so yeah, it felt like kind of like an absurdist play to me, and I guess what he's really asking with it is what happens to our personalities when we've become so accustomed to this online life and online existence what still remains of our personalities um, without that and so some of the characters are just sort of gibbering nonsense as if they were still looking at the internet or watching tv sort of imitating or trying to recreate what was on that screen and uh so yeah it's um i i thought it was kind of interesting but it didn't really emotionally grabbed me and the the characters felt sort of you know that they were there to serve the purpose of the story rather than them being characters that you could really emotionally invest with in any way and he try, tries to do some things but he I thought he did it kind of clumsily in um, how one of the the characters um, the the wife who's on the plane um, she's biracial and she talks about how she um, she writes in these notebooks all the time about her experiences trying to capture all of her experience and after this um, cataclysmic event takes place she start she has this little crisis there's this line about crisis of identity where she wonders about her looks at her skin color and and wonders like oh should I be here or should I should I really be somewhere else or where do I really belong and it feels like he just put that detail in there about her so she could have this crisis about her racial identity which felt con- contrived and, and really like forced in a way rather than just letting it be like an aspect of her character like that was sort of the main thing about her I yeah I found that quite frustrating I find it a bit offensive when white writers write about characters who are of a uh, different ethnic identity than who they are so um so yeah I had slight trouble with that but um but otherwise I thought the the novel was kind of interesting and thoughtful in how it presented this but obviously it's quite a slender book um there's so yeah I couldn't go like very deep into the story and and it just felt like the the author's kind of you know expressing his worst fears about what happens to us as a civilization there's this quote from Einstein that you know that um that in World War Three um what's the the quote so yeah Einstein says I do not know with what weapons World War Three will be fought but World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones as if you know we're all gonna sort of revert back to this almost kind of primitive state of being um, because we'll sort of destroy all of um, you know the the uh, the advances that civilization has has made so he seems to be really preoccupied with that kind of thought which is you know a real fear that a lot of us should be having but um, so yeah I thought it was interesting but it didn't make me fall in love with his writing again I, I wouldn't say um, I would be interested to go back and read some of his earlier novels again at some point but um, if you have feelings or um, thoughts about Don DeLillo like let me know in the comments below um, if you have any kind of experience or relationship with his work um, I'd be interested to know. I also read This Happy by Neve Campbell Um, so uh, so you can see the, the author's name there and uh, yeah, this is such a striking cover, doesn't it? Um, it's it's uh, it's it's really excellent. And uh, I've seen some reviews that kind of cattily say like the cover is the best thing about it. And uh, I I wouldn't say that, um, but I would say that I thought this novel was just fine. Um, it's it's about a um, a woman who's reflecting back on her relationships. Um, in her early adult life, she had an affair with a married man, and then uh, when Uh, and then she got married herself and um, so she's sort of looking back on her experiences and thinking about comparisons between these two relationships and what I guess sort of connects us to to people ultimately and how genuine those connections are but I, I have a strange 
feeling, even though I just read this very recently, I can barely remember anything about it. And I think it's beautifully written. There's some um, lovely little pithy insights she has about relationships and our sort of psychological being in it. Um, but it's um, the, the story is so meandering. It doesn't, you know, there's not really a strong plot to it. It doesn't really go anywhere and you know and I'm not somebody who really needs uh, a strong plot always but I just felt like there wasn't too much to sort of hold on to in in this that I could really cling to and, and understand to um yeah get a sense of the story or the the characters that in a way that they would really resonate or stick with me um so I, I thought it was interesting but it's one of those novels that I just thought was was fine I also read Joyce Carol Oates new book Cardiff by the Sea um which is a collection of novellas it's four novellas in uh in one book and it hasn't been um published yet so I don't have a physical copy of it yet um I I read an e-copy through NetGalley so this is um sub as uh novellas of suspense and uh and they do have a real tension to all of the different stories you know Joyce Carol has this brilliant way of creating um this this air where um you don't know quite know what's real and um what's really happening and what's just in the characters minds at, at some points and I love novels that can hold that that kind of tension because you're kind of wondering all the time like what's really happening and because you're seeing it through their perspective um you can't really know what's you know what's what's truly going on and uh, and I find that really exciting and um so the the main novella and I think the longest novella in this collection is the the title one which is Cardiff by the Sea about a uh, young woman who was adopted and she she's never really thought about her what her, her real birth parents were, were like. Um, she was adopted by a couple who were very loving and, um, and she is just sort of happy thinking about that with her history. But then she suddenly gets an inheritance of a house in Maine from her deceased grandmother who she didn't even know existed. And, um, and, and so she, she travels to Maine to sort of claim this new estate. And, um, and there's two absolutely fantastic characters in that uh, she, she writes about where um, there's these two old great aunts of the, the main character who are so uh, sort of doting and, um, and, and bicker with each other a lot. Like they make a great fuss when they, they finally meet her and welcome her into their house and are so fussy and um and sort of catty with each other that it's it's you just get these this um this dialogue ringing between them that that feels like symbols clashing and it's as if the um the narrator is sort of stuck between them hearing their voices and um and it just makes it very funny in in a way because um just how they're they're presented and these particular types of characters they they're just so vivid in my imagination the way she writes about them through their dialogue with each other it's um it's very funny but um but but the story is very solemn in its in its tone in her sort of reflecting about her past and and there's this whole hidden story about what happened to her parents and this mystery of what um happened to them which she suddenly finds herself interested and engaged with and and trying to do almost detective work trying to figure out what really happened and so yeah there's this whole air of tension about it um which is really exciting and, and interesting and and um yeah, makes you sort of think about your um sort of issues to do with identity and 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 what really makes us you know is it nature or nurture and and all of those questions which Joyce Carol Oates asks quite a lot in a lot of her fiction um but is just yeah, sort of um, distilled down here in a really effective way. And um, the, the other novellas in the um, collection are really excellent as well. I thought um, there's one called Mio Dao um, about a, a teenage girl whose parents uh, break up and um, and the mother um, takes on a new husband. And as this girl is getting older, I think she turns 14 and then she starts developing into a woman and then her new stepfather takes a uh, slightly seedy interest in her um, so there's this whole tension about that um, but she takes comfort in this um, stray cat who she 
tries to adopt. Joyce Kellis is so good about writing uh, about adolescent characters in that way. Um, she she quite often writes about adolescent girls, and um, and yeah, and this again, this character is just so vivid and powerful. And there's a story called Phantom Wise about a young woman who's at university and who has an affair with one of her lecturers, but then she starts to have a relationship with a much older lecturer as well, who's a very famous poet, and she becomes kind of an assistant to him. And she finds out that she's pregnant, um, but uh, this is set in the year before uh, Roe versus Wade that made abortions illegal in America. And, uh, and so she's not she wants to have an abortion but she's not legally able to have one and and um and so there's this kind of political edge to the story which is um is surprisingly relevant now you know now that there's the the been the tragic uh, death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her place on the Supreme Court has been set by a woman who may be slightly sympathetic with overturning Roe versus Wade. So this is going to be a huge political issue in America. Again, I mean, abortion has always been a huge political issue in America. But um, but yeah, it's, it's, it seems very timely that she's written this story, which um, the, the way she writes it, it almost sort of makes this this point about abortion and, and a woman's right to do what she wants with their body and so um yeah and, and then there's also this uh novella called the surviving child about a uh, uh about a, a woman who marries a man whose wife was a famous poet and who has committed suicide and uh and taken their daughter with them but they're the eldest son of the family he survived and so he's the surviving child and it almost has the whole story has this almost rebecca type quality to it in that it's a almost slightly haunted house story and it's a woman who's sort of replaced a wife that's been there before and um who it feels like she's this threatening presence in in throughout the story and um so yeah there's this whole air of tension that goes throughout the whole story um which is very gripping and uh yeah really kept me up and want made me want to know what was going to happen and um i thought it was really interesting how she chose to end the novella and uh yeah this is one of those novellas that i think would make a really great film um, i can just picture it there's this like big beautiful house which maybe slightly haunted and um yeah and there's this whole mystery um behind the the family and what really happened with the wife's death and uh so yeah i i thought this is a really great collection and uh, it's interesting that that uh that joyce carolitz has chosen to focus on sort of novellas more in these kind of shorter form of novels rather than you know either short stories or or novels in themselves so it's it's quite unique to have a collection like this i also read this giant new novel xx by ryan hughes uh, which is subtitled a novel graphic uh, rather than a graphic novel because uh, the the novel uses a lot of graphics and uh different forms of um type to uh tell its its story um so it gets quite wild in in some places and uh, so this is one of the the big books that I want to read before the end of the year that I talked about in a previous video and uh, I was glad because because uh, like I said we went to Italy so um, which was mostly just sort of relaxing around by this lake and by this um, by this self-catered apartment that we were staying at um, that had man magnificent views so I had a lot of time to uh, to to read this and really get involved in it and uh, I know I did a video um, while I was there um, doing a reaction to the Women's Prize winner um, but I felt like I wasn't able to fully show the the scenery and how absolutely beautiful it was um, so I'll just show that now um, while I'm while I'm talking about this um, just because it, it was so gorgeous I, I just can't get over how beautiful it was but uh, but yeah I was really glad to have a lot of time to to relax and fully get into this story and novel and it feels like the the kind of perfect novel for me at the moment because uh, like I've been talking about in some past videos I've been getting more into science fiction recently or wanting to read more science fiction and this is basically a science fiction novel but a very literary kind and one that I think straddles kind of a lot of genres really and and um, because it it's about so many different things um it's it's the the main thrust of the story is there's a signal that comes from outer space which scientists have are able to detect is doesn't come from a natural source that um you know somebody must be projecting this so it's seen as kind of proof as extraterrestrial life and um and there's a small tech company in london that begins investigating this and they think that the signal isn't just a message from outer space but it's actually 
a kind of code which contains the aliens themselves and um, and so the the story sort of goes from there and uh, and it's very adventurous and wild but also incredibly thoughtful and in, and how it looks at the meaning of um, what makes us human what what makes uh, what what what's the meaning of consciousness how that really works how that can be really even classified and um, you know these this kind of very science fiction questions of of um, of the progression of artificial intelligence and technology and where is that really leading to and and how does that you know relate to our senses of identity and also yeah issues to do with extraterrestrial life and then if it's discovered there is more life out in outer space. What what does that do to our conceptions about God and religion and and all of you know sort of those big questions? But while also telling a really engaging and fun story, like even though this novel is quite long, I think it's nine hundred and seventy seven pages. I felt engaged throughout almost the whole way. And like I always say with big books, if you're really enjoying it, you stop. Um, counting the pages and you're just sort of involved in the story and just wanted to go on and and uh, and I really found that this with this novel um there's so many twists to it and and turns that it um you know kept me excited and engaged in that way but also the way the text is actually laid out in you know these with these different graphics is a different way of telling a story like it it really says something in the the structure and the form of the graphics that adds to the larger story you know it's not just there as kind of a flourish and the author is actually a designer himself so he's designed some of the different typefaces that are used in the this novel and just found it so creative and fun and inventive and thoughtful and uh, and so yeah I thought this was magnificent and really worth the time reading it but like I said it was you know this is came along almost exactly at the right time for me and having this kind of interest in science fiction so if you know you're not really into science fiction you might find that um a bit hard to take but uh but i think a lot of people really enjoy this novel if they they give it a try so um so yeah i think it's magnificent and uh, and yeah i just I, I can't recommend it enough and then finally i read this brief novel called indelicacy by amina kane i sort of assumed recent when i first saw this and from the cover that the this, that it might be a very old novel because of the you know sort of painting on the cover and also the the story isn't set um, anywhere it's it's not defined where it's set or what time it's set um, what the year is or anything about that so it does feel sort of timeless in a way but it is a new novel and it's about a woman who um, works as a cleaner in a museum but has a real drive to write and um, and is always trying to to write fiction but she also writes a lot of commentary about the paintings that she's cleaning around um, as part of her job and um, and is describing the the paintings that she sees and what's happening in these paintings and uh, and it's this really interesting way of thinking about the creative process and this interplay between what we see and what we interpret how we interpret what we see and then how we sort of process that in our our individual subjective experience of that and 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 and, uh, and so it's it's this kind of meditation on the creative process but also about her relationship because she's able to leave this job ultimately because she meets a man who's very wealthy who she marries and then she suddenly enters this very privileged life in which she's still trying to to write and be a writer and the relationships are really interesting in that and that's particularly her relationships with other women because when she was working at the museum she was good friends with another cleaner who she sort of um, just sort of leaves and stops being friends with once she gets married but then when she's married and she has a maid herself in her house um, she tries to start this friendship with the maid there who really rebuffs her and doesn't want to be have any sort of personal relationship with her and she feels kind of hurt by this and um so yeah it's it's this interesting ideas about class and privilege as well and um and yeah how that affects our relationships with other people but also yes yeah, sort of ultimately what we want to to do with our lives whether she she really wants to be a writer or not and what are the conditions which will inspire and nurture her talent in in being a writer and uh so so yeah i thought this was a very thoughtful and um and uh, and really enjoyable novel. I think it's really interesting how she strips it of 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 any particular time and place because um yeah you don't have those sort of 
outside details to sort of add to the story. It's a very interior sort of novel and, and thoughtful book, which is really about her mental process rather than, yeah, these kind of like larger societal issues, you know. So, yeah, I thought this was really excellent uh, novel, really enjoyed it. So, um, so yeah, so those are all the books I, I read. Uh, let me know if, if, uh, if you've read any of these books um, yourselves, if, if, uh, if you have any thoughts about them or if you're interested in reading any of them now. And, uh, and like I said, yeah, let me know what else you've been reading over the month of September that you would really recommend or or, or, you know, maybe something you really didn't like and had a strong reaction to. Um, I'd be curious to know about that as well. But uh, hope you're doing well. Hope uh, hope the weather is better where, wherever you are. And I'll, uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye, everyone.